Welcome, I'm the Deadwood Jedi. This is gonna be another Raid Shadow Legends video, and boy, we got a cool champion coming in. Ultimate Death Knight is here to stay. He's part of the daily login for the next seven days or so. Uh, obviously, the login period is gonna be longer than that, but basically, if you start in playing today, for the next seven days, if you play every day, you're gonna be able to get Ultimate Death Knight on your account, and he looks good. He looks really good. In addition to that, there's a promo code coming attached with him. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about all that in this video today. So let's start by taking a look at him. Look at this guy, Ultimate Death Knight. Look at the dude. Oh gosh, he put the, the helmet thing. Came. Oh no, he dropped the sword. Uh, well, you know, it's good to know that he hasn't changed at all. And I think Mr. Nibbles is part of his kit too, which is pretty cool. Not his kit, but in his animations. Oh, there he goes. There's Nibbles. Oh, there he goes. Oh, where'd he go? I, yeah, he lost him too. He's pretty cool though. I have to say I like this. You know, part of what I like about the aesthetic here is he's still kind of skinny for this all this great armor, right? But if you notice, even his bones got a little bit of a gold twinge to them there, which is pretty, pretty dope, I'd say. Uh, Nibbles apparently appears through his back there, which is something, but I love the fact that he's got these skinny arms and this big sword and the big shield. I can't wait to actually see his animations, but obviously I have to wait six more days just like you guys in order to actually play with him. So I won't be able to see his animations, see how hard he hits, all that stuff just yet. But obviously we'll get some of that data mine info about as you know multipliers and things like that but my guess is this guy would be able to hit hard and i've looked at his kit and i really like it actually i think this is going to be probably one of the best actually i would say the best starter champion for everybody out there and even if you've been playing a while i have a feeling you're going to find ways to be able to utilize this champion because he's got some both you know pretty generic things but also some really cool unique mechanics as well so let's take a quick look at that so if we start off look at Death Knight's kits. Now, obviously, he's got five skills here, including two passive abilities. That's usually a really good sign as far as the kit goes. And, you know, before we get into that, let's take a look at his, his base stats here. So his base HP, 20,000. It's a really high number for a base HP. That means it's going to be very tanky. It's going to be easy to build his HP up to a solid level without too much work. His defense... Uh, 1400 is a pretty high number. It's not quite like Valkyrie size, but in general, anything over 1300 is a really high number for this game. 14 is a really good starting spot, and he is a defensive based champion, which means all of his skills and attacks are going to be based off defense. So having a good high number there is really advantageous. 97 speed is pretty middle of the road, right? It's a little slower than average. I think you want, I think 99 is probably about the average speed of most of the champions in this game. 97 is not too bad. Um, it's not going to be slow enough where it's going to impact anything. Definitely not fast enough where you're going to get an advantage from that, but it's not a problem. The rest of his stats are pretty solid. He does get a little bonus uh, base resistance of 40, base accuracy of 20. Both of those are pretty solid as well. Um, and then if we look at his kit, I think we can see he's going to have a lot of utility pretty much in every area of this game. Now, his A1 has a Provoke, and it's a 30% chance to land it. It's 50% when booked. That's already a pretty solid spot, but it's going to have an extra 25% chance to land against Legendary Champions, which is kind of a unique mechanic there. So against Legendary, he's going to have a 75% of landing that on that A1. Now, it is a single hit attack, so it's got to be a pretty strong one to be of any use to us, but... That's pretty good. I like that a lot. Um, you know, any kind of utility off that A1 is really nice. So you can see this being good in against dungeon waves, campaign. Like, this is a starter champion. So when you're starting out, this could be really helpful for you. Even against, I think, in uh, Arena, this could be really helpful as well. Now, this A2, I really like. It's an AoE hit. Always good. And it's got a, uh, basically when it's booked, it's going to be a 100% chance to land decrease accuracy. Very vital skill to make sure that your champions are taking less damage. And then on top of that, has it 80, booked up to 100% chance of landing fear debuff for one turn on every legendary champion you're opposing. Um, and so that's a really interesting secondary bonus, right? So if we're talking about bringing him in arena, where you're facing a lot of legendary champions, that's a great skill, right? You're decreasing the attack, the attack of all your enemies, and you're placing fear on all the legendary champions there. That can be a game changer for arena. If you're talking about something like Doom Tower, again, pretty awesome to be able to get an extra AoE 
debuff basically against all the toughest champions you're facing. And uh, so, you know, that's going to be great, especially for things like campaign. It's not as helpful necessarily when you're going through the campaign, but it's still an AoE decrease attack, which is crucial. And this does book down to a three turn skill as does his A3 skill. And I think this is the one that's really gonna make this kit something that's end game viable because he's gonna place a shield and a 15% continuous heal buff on all allies for two turns. Now that might not seem that crazy, but when you factor the fact that the shield is proportional to his defense, that could be huge. The only other champions that do this are Helicath and Valkyrie. And we already know how massive those shields are that they place. Well, we now have another champion that can do that in Ultimate Death Knight, and this is also on a three-turn cooldown. This is a really, really massive ability of his. So I can see him being very valuable in things like Clan Boss because we all know Valkyrie Shield, Hellcat Shield, that's the kind of thing that can help you survive 50 turns just based off the shield alone. Uh, the fact that he's bringing in Continuous Heal to help your team heal up along that way, and that he's bringing Decrease Attack so you don't have to bring in another champion for that, these are massive, massive uh, things to have in his kit. And if he can hit hard too, that's only an added bonus. And then we get to the passive ability, which I think is also via very, very important to check out here, right? So passive ability... Whenever an ally is attacked, has a 100% chance of completely blocking one hit, decreasing the incoming damage to zero. This champion will receive that damage instead. Now, this chance decreases to 50% chance that the attacker is a boss and does not work if the attack what on the ally was an AoE attack. So look, he's not gonna be able to protect AoE attacks, right? But when you're facing people that are hitting you single target, what's happening is Ultimate Death Knight is gonna absorb that damage instead of your allies. And against the bosses, that'll work about half the time. So we think about something like the stun for clan boss. Well, Sepulchre Sentinel has a similar passive ability, right? Well, she blocks, she just reduces the damage to zero. Instead, Ultimate Death Knight's basically absorbing that, taking that instead of your ally. And considering he's a defensive-based champion, that could be massive. Now, I don't know that, I think especially for clan boss, it's not like the damage being factored is based off Death Knight, it's based off who's being hit, but he's the one absorbing it. So you can still build him with a ton of HP, a ton of defense, and he's absorbing a hit from a champ that might be going against a champion that basically would have half of those numbers. That could be huge. Now it is 50%, so you can't rely on it 100% of the time, but that's a still a pretty awesome ability right there. And then whenever an enemy is healed, heals this champion by 20% of that heal. So he has a passive healing ability based off the enemy. So let's think about this instead of like arena, where you have, you know, single target attackers like uh, Rotos, for example. Well, Instead of Rotos killing, you know, whoever he's targeting, Death Knight's going to take that damage instead. That could be massive, truly massive. And then, you know, when your enemy's healed, he heals this champion. So let's say you're facing Withier, who's healing your their team all the time, or Vogoth or whatever. Well, Death Knight's now healing up every time that happens. This is a really strong ability that's going to be useful all throughout the game. Between this passive and that shield... I think he is a going to be a crazy good champion for us in a lot of areas of this game. And his second passive ability increases his HP, defense, and speed by 10% for each dead ally. So every time somebody dies, he's going to get faster, he's going to get stronger, he's going to get tankier. That's not a bad thing to have. Obviously, you you know you don't want your team to die, but it just gives him another added bonus of an ability here. And on top of that, he has a really nice aura. All defense, defense, all battles, 30%. It's a really nice ability. So, yeah, this guy is bringing pretty much whoop, this guy's bringing basically everything we want out of a, you know, champion for this game, even if he can't hold on to his own sword, which I think is really funny that they have that in there. I love that they kept his personality even while making him uh, you know, an incredibly good champion. Now, obviously, you know, we never know exactly how good these champions are going to be until we test them. And if he hits like a wet noodle, He's not going to be super useful. If he, you know, that shield is has a really low multiplier and it's not making a big shield, he's not going to be super useful. But even without those things, I think his passive abilities and his normal abilities that he has are still strong enough to make him viable. If those multipliers are really significant, all of a sudden he's not just viable, but he's extremely good for 99% of the people out there playing this game in your accounts. Um, I'm actually really excited to get him because I feel like there's going to be a lot of ways to utilize him. Not just in clan boss, but I think in arena, I think is going to be really interesting, actually, because I feel like this is the kind of guy that could be an anti-Rotos killer or an anti-Mountain King. You know, those single target damage dealers where all of a sudden Death Knight's going to be 
protecting them and absorbing that damage instead. I think that could be a lot of potential to that type of a kit, you know, for that type of a usage for him. Uh, on top of that, if he hits hard enough, he could just be a really good damage dealer for that as well, right? So there's a lot of interesting possibilities for him uh, all throughout this game. Like I said, Doom Tower, Clan Boss, Arena, I think there's a lot of good strong potential for him. Even Hydra with that shield, the continuous heal, the AoE decreased attack, the provoke on the A1. There's actually a lot to like about him for most areas of this game. Not to mention the single target protection and, you know, when allies dies, he gets stronger. All that stuff, I think, really lends itself to pretty much every area of this game. So I really like Ultimate Death Knight. I think this is going to be a good addition. And I think, you know, we should all be pretty excited to get him on our kit. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. In case you guys didn't know, there is a promo code as well, right? DK Rises. That's all you got to do. DK Rises. Type that into the promo code and you're going to get a whole bunch of stuff to basically help you level up Ultimate Death Knight, which should be really, really cool, right? You're going to get a lot of potions and, uh, you know, some energy, some silver, all that fun stuff. So it's a really nice one. It's actually one of the, I think, stronger promo codes I've given out. So definitely worth doing. DK Rises. Just make sure to put that in. Anyway, guys, that's all we got for today. So until next we meet, I'm the Deadwood Jedi. <laughs>